Hello and welcome to this webinar series covering the FlexiSoft controller from SICK. This webinar is the first in a series and it's the introduction to FlexiSoft where we look at what FlexiSoft is, looking at our basic configuration and how it can benefit you and your workplace. My name is Ian Keatley-Smith. I am one of three functional safety engineers at SICK UK. The other two you may have heard of, one is Seb Strutt and the other is Martin Kidman. We also have a number of sales engineers that are also qualified by the TUV as functional safety technicians. So whether you're talking to myself or my colleagues, be rest assured that you will be talking to somebody who is knowledgeable within the field of machinery safety. So looking at the agenda for today's webinar, the first thing we're going to look at is what is FlexiSoft? Um, many customers and people who are watching this webinar may not be aware of what FlexiSoft is, so we'll have a brief introduction as to its capabilities and how it's put together. We'll then say big or small, so we can uh, flex FlexiSoft as the name suggests, Flexi, it's flexible. So we can cover very small applications all the way up to very complex applications uh, requiring remote I.O. Also, the third thing we're going to look at is where we get all the information from. Um, so I'll show you where to get that. And then we'll start looking at building a basic configuration. And for the basic configuration, we'll be looking at how to put hardware together and how that's all configured. We'll then be looking at how you develop logic. We will then talk about simulating that logic to make sure that what you've designed works as it should do. And finally, we'll be looking at reporting, which will uh, detail everything that you've done. Then we'll have a look at future webinars and I'll introduce you to the other webinars within the series that are coming up. So let's move on to the first thing. What is FlexiSoft? So FlexiSoft is, as I've said previously, a modular safety controller. So it's very expandable depending on your safety requirements. So every system that you build requires a CPU and there are four CPUs that you can choose from. The CPU zero is the most basic CPU and it's just got processing power. So all it does is process the code that you've written. With CPU one, you have what's called EFI, which stands for Enhanced Function Interface. And that is a SICK protocol uh, which runs over a twisted pair wire and we use that twisted pair wire to connect to devices from the SICK range, such as safety laser scanners and light curtains. If we look as an example of our laser scanner, all you would need to do is apply 24 volts to and 0 volts to the laser scanner. You then have a twisted pair wire coming back up to the CPU1. And within the logic of the CPU, you now have access to information such as contamination of the lens, the protective field, the warning field, and we can also do field switching and send signals down to the laser scanner. So if you're looking at an automatic guided vehicle, for example, we can send down signals to change the field and we can also change it dynamically by the speed of the AGV. So FA gives us great functionality with only through, with, well, by only going through a twisted pair wire. And we have two of those ports on the CPU1, FE1 and FE2. On the CPU2, you'll notice that the system plug, which sits at the top of the CPU, has got a yellow mark in it. So with CPU2, you have the ability to back up the laser scanner configuration up to that memory plug. So if the laser scanner were to be damaged out in the field, all you need to do is plug in a new laser scanner and we can download the configuration that's held in the system plug straight down to the scanner. With CPU3, again, we have this automatic configuration recovery feature as indicated with the yellow mark on top of the system plug. But we also have the ability to program the device using a USB port as well as the standard 
M8 four pin connector on the front of the device. We also have a feature called Flexi Line, and this will be covered in a future webinar, but that allows you to connect up to 32 CPUs together, each CPU being a kilometre apart. So um, you can start to see how we uh, offer the increased availability of the system by uh, having remote I.O. and things. So that's the choice of the four CPUs. The next thing you have to do is choose an I.O. card. So we have a choice of four. The XTIO has got eight digital inputs and four safety outputs. The XTDI has eight digital inputs only, but we do have test pulse outputs from that. The XTDS has eight safe digital inputs and four standard outputs. So the outputs aren't safety rated. They can be used to drive things such as lamps. And then we have a grey card there, which is called the STIO, and that is for standard communications only. So anything that's yellow is a safety card. Anything that is grey is a standard card or for diagnostics. Also built into the FlexiSoft controller, we have the ability to do motion control and analog control. So you have a Mach 0 here and a Mach 1. The difference between them is that the Mach 1 can do safe position control and safe speed, whereas the Mach 0 can just do safe speed. And then we have a safe analog input card as well, which takes 4 to 20 milliamps. From a diagnostic point of view, and again we'll be covering diagnostics in a lot more detail in a future webinar, we have a range of diagnostic cards so you can send the safety data up to a PLC so you can see for example which inputs and outputs are being activated and also send diagnostic data up to the PLC of any problems you may have with the system. For diagnostic cards we have EtherCAT, we have Profinet, Ethernet IP, Profibus, CanOpen, Modbus TCP, CC Link, and DeviceNet. So with all of those diagnostic card options, hopefully one of them will be, suit your requirements and communicate with your PLC that you're using on your machine. So that's the choice of hardware that you have with the FlexiSoft controller. So big or small, we've got it covered. If you look at a basic system, it would comprise of a CPU0 and an XTIO. So at the top there, you can see the system plug. So you've got A1 and A2, and that powers up the CPU. You then have a circular port in the front there. That's your programming port. So it's an M8 four pin programming port. You have a couple of LEDs. One is MS to tell you the module status. The second one is code validated. And on the XTIO, the blue circles that you see are your eight inputs and the four triangles labeled Q1 to Q4 are your outputs. You'll also see at the top there, it's got X1 and X2, and we use those to generate test pulses, which we can discuss later on. And then you've got power to the card as well on A1 and A2. So that's the, a typical small system. That's what you would have, just a couple of cards there. If you had a bigger system, then we can go all the way up to up to 12 cards, depending on the configuration that you choose. Um, you can also have two diagnostic cards per system. So in this scenario here, you've got a Profinet I.O. card and you also have Ethernet IP. And they are not included in the 12 cards that you can have. So um, so when it says 12 cards, it's 12 safety cards. If you have got lots of e-stops out in the line or gates, rather than wiring everything all the way back into the control panel, we have a system which is called FlexiLoop. And again, FlexiLoop will be discussed in a future webinar in more detail on how it's all configured. But you can have up to eight loops per FlexiSoft system. And on those loops, you can have 32 nodes up to one meter apart. The graphic on the right shows your typical system there where you have the nodes 
located around the machine and then you drop down to e-stops and um, also you've got gate switches there. We have the ability to send unlock commands down that flexi loop as well and you also get all the diagnostic data back from those loops so you know which device has been activated. But as I said, we'll cover flexi loop in much more detail in a future webinar. If your system is even bigger, where you have multiple flexi softs, then we have two options for you. The first option is called flexi link which allows you to link up to four FlexiSofts together and we use that uh, EFI port that I discussed earlier to send data between the four CPUs of a system. The great thing about it is there's only one programming file so you can plug into any of the FlexiSofts and download the configuration to the other three. The maximum length that you can go from the first FlexiSoft system to the last FlexiSoft system is 100 meters. Now on top of that, we've mentioned it a little bit when we were going through the CPUs, is we also have the ability to do a thing called FlexiLine, which allows you to connect up to 32 CPUs together with one kilometer apart between each one. And you can have a combination of all of these systems. So you could have 32 systems connected together one kilometer apart and each of those systems has got eight flexi, or flexi loops so you can see how it can all of a sudden become a very powerful remote system and um, yeah it covers pretty much every safety requirement that you would you can think of obviously if you can think of anything we haven't covered here then by all means get in touch and let us know so that's covering the small application all the way up to the, the complex things that we can do with this. So where do you get more information on the FlexiSoft? So the first place that most people tend to look at is websites. So if you go to the SIC website, what you need to do is go up and look at uh, SIC.com. Once you go to SIC.com, it'll open up into our landing page. And it says, I'm looking for, just type in there, Flexi or FlexiSoft and you'll be able to drill down to the landing page for the FlexiSoft. So just click on that and that'll give you access to details and all the modules where you can get all the manuals and uh, you can also get all of the files which help you attach the diagnostics card onto your PLC. So EDS files and the like. Another place where you can find lots of information is by going to the YouTube channel. So when I'm sick, I've got a YouTube channel. Again, the easiest thing to do there is to go up into the search bar, just type in sick sensor intelligence. And once you go to there, you can then subscribe to our YouTube channel. And on that YouTube channel, if you, there's loads of videos, but if you click on the little search icon and type in FlexiSoft, then that'll take you to a whole array of videos. So there's a whole section on FlexiSoft Designer Flexi loop, flexi line, and the, also the motion control modules are all described in there as well in great detail. So it's a it's a great place to go to to find information. So that is our YouTube channel. But as I know you're all asking, where do I get the software? Well, the software is free of charge from SIC, and to get the software, just go to download section. On the landing page there go to software and simply type in FlexiSoft and once you've typed in that it will take you to the download area where you can get the software so all you do is you click on that link there click on download and you can download the most up-to-date version it's license free so you can put it on as many laptops as you like or desktop machines as you like so that is where you get the software from. So what we're going to do now is look at building a basic configuration. So when you open the software, this is the landing page that you see when you open up the software. You have the option to open an existing project, connect to a physical system. If you're connected via the orange programming cable, that's the M84 pin or via USB. 
Another way of connecting to a device is using the Ethernet port. If you're using a diagnostics card with Ethernet, so that would be a Profinet card, or an Ethernet IP card, or a Modbus TCP card, you can actually program the device through those gateways. So there's various ways of connecting onto the system. You can create a new project. You then have the option there to create a Flexi Link project, and we'll be looking at that in a future webinar. So what we're going to do here is we're going to build a basic configuration. We're going to simulate the logic. And then we're going to create a report. So if we then go in here, what we're going to do is create a new project. So simply take your mouse down, click on create a new project. Now there's a pop-up window opened up here, but you can't see it. So it'll just open up into the software. And the first thing you have to do is to choose your CPU module. So here's the CPU you described earlier, CPU 0, 1, 2, and 3. And we're just going to build a basic system. So I'm going to pick a CPU 0. Once you click on the plus, it comes into your configuration area. And you can see their system plug at the top there, as highlighted. There's your programming port. And then you have two LEDs. MS stands for module status. And CV stands for code verified. And we'll be looking into these in more detail in future webinars. Next thing you've got is your gateways. You've got Ethercat, Profinet, Ethernet, Profibus, CanOpen, Modbus TCP, CC Link, and DeviceNet. So because it's a basic system, we're not going to look at any gateways. Next thing is our I.O. modules. There's your XTIO, your XTDI, XTDS, and then we've got our STIO, Mach 0, Mach 1, and our analog card. So we're building a basic system, so let's bring in an XTIO. And that will be added into the configuration area. So up here, there's your four inputs here, and your other inputs here, and there's your outputs. There's LED indication telling you the status of them. And it's got a module status on that slice as well. We also have the option of choosing relays. So if you want to get a volt-free contact, we can add relay cards in here. Now we're going to click on Elements, because we have to tell FlexiSoft what's connected to those inputs and outputs. And there's a whole selection of devices here. So if we select Control Devices and tick up a dual channel e-stop, all we're going to do is drag that over and drop it down on the appropriate input. Now you'll see there it's got a lightning bolt next to it, and X1 and X2 has got what looks like a digital waveform. That's test pulses. And you'll see that later on when we do the report. Then we're going to come down and we're going to choose a reset push button. Take it over and you can put the reset push button down anywhere. So there we're choosing input 4. And now what we're going to do is go and choose some outputs. So for the outputs we've got electrical symbols or graphics. I'm going to click on the electrical symbols and choose a motor. And then I'm going to go over and choose a lamp. And again, I can drop that down on any of those outputs. Once I've allocated the inputs and outputs, I then come over from the hardware configuration section to the logic editor. Just click on logic editor. And here is our graph paper for our logic. The inputs that we've selected are available here. And if we go down to the bottom here, uh, we're on the Inputs tab, we go to the Outputs tab, if you click on that, you'll then see your motor and your lamp. So what we're going to do is go to Inputs and simply drag those inputs over into the graph paper area and we'll start building up the logic. So there's the e-stop, there's the reset, and just to make it look better I'll increase the size of the here to 150%. So we'll tap the outputs. There's my motor. And there is my lamp. So we need some logic now. So to get logic, we go down to the function blocks down here in between inputs and outputs. We have a whole array of logic. So ANDs, ORs, exclusive ORs, RS flip flops, and 
things like that. So we've got all of that. We also have start and edge, delays, counters, muting blocks, press blocks, you name it, we've got it. So go to start and edge, grab a reset block, simply drag it over, and then you play a game of join the dots. So reset goes to reset, e stop goes to e stop. But these here, if you want to know what they are, you come up here and you click on this button here, and that'll tell you what they are. So if you're not sure what these pins are, just click on that button there. So here we are. You join the e stop up, and then join the motor to the output, and then we'll join the lamp down here. Now you can drag it over, touch it on, pull it back, and that will automatically draw the line for you. And then if you've got OCD, you have to make sure the lines are all straight. So the other thing you can do here is you can add in notes. So we're just going to drag this over. And I'm going to type into this box the description of how this logic should work. And this is great. This is actually sent down to the memory plug as well. So in the future, when you come to upload the program again, you've got some idea of what was in your mind when you were building the logic. So we're going to put in a description here of this function which will open up in a second just wait for it to come in again it's a pop-up window and then it uh, you can't see it in the video but it will come in I'm obviously writing a lot and then there it is and then you can resize it and it automatically wraps the text so pressing the e-stop will stop the motor on releasing the e-stop the reset lamp will flash, and once you press and release, the, uh, the motor will start again. So there's a simulator up here, you can see the three bricks. Click on the bricks, and then the screen will change, and it'll go blue. And we start the time, you can see the clock running away when you click the play button. There we go, clock's running away. We hit the e-stop, so we're simulating the e-stop being healthy. The reset lamp is flashing. We press the reset push button and release it and the motor runs, we press the e-stop and the motor will stop there we go, do the healthy again reset required lamp flashes press and release the reset and the motor goes again so that's your simulation now it says up here page 1, you can have multiple pages and we also have the ability to rename the page so up here I'm just going to change this and rather than saying page 1 I'm going to change that so it just says um, basic circuit. There we go. So that is that. Now we're going to look at the report. So click on the report and in the report what it will do is it will first of all give you a bill of materials. So if you scroll down there you'll see all the part numbers are selected for the devices that you're using. And then if we keep coming down there's your hardware that you've got with your I.O. Keep coming down, there's your logic with your comments. So this is all within your report, and you'll save this report as part of your technical file. Down here, it shows you how to wire it. So here's your test pulse. It sends a pulse out from X1 to input 1, out of X2, and into input 2. 24 volts in there for the reset. Q1 to the motor, Q4 to the lamp. Now, if you scroll back up again, you will see that the, under general information here, those details of the application. So your application's got a name, it's got a CRC checksum, when it was configured and the date that it was configured. So if anyone comes along later on and tries to change it, then you will um, you'll be able to use that as a reference. So up at the top left there, you can see there's a save icon just underneath the hardware configuration. So you can click on that and you can save this report as a PDF document and I say that will form part of your technical file for your machine. So that's just a quick overview of the of the FlexiSoft, um, how you put a system together, how you put some basic logic together and how to simulate that logic and also how to generate the report. Looking at the future webinars that we've got coming up, We've obviously just done webinar one, which was a brief introduction to the FlexiSoft. Webinar two is going to look into more details of the function blocks that are available to you and some of the things you can, you can build up. 
Webinar 3 is going to look at how you configure a Flexi Loop project, and that's using those little nodes that we showed earlier on um, to sort of have remote I.O. for your e-stops and door switches and light cuttings and scanners and things. Webinar 4 is going to look at configuring a Flexi Link project. So the Link project is when you can have up to four Flexi Softs configured uh, in a system and it's one programming file for it. So that's Flexi Link. And Webinar 5, we're going to look at Flexi Line. And the only CPU that supports Flexi Line is the CPU 3, as we described earlier. So we'll have a look at how that is all put together. And Webinar 6 is to look at diagnostics. So the diagnostics are really the most important thing because we're trying to say reduce downtime and increase productivity. So I'm going to go through some things you can do with the diagnostics cards. Um, all the diagnostic cards, by the way, are two-way communication. So we can send information up to the PLC and we also have the ability to bring information from the PLC down into the FlexiSoft. So we'll go into a lot more detail on Webinar 6. In Webinar 7, we're going to actually look at an example machine, in this case a robot palletizer. So we'll look at a machine layout, we'll look at the safety components, we'll build up the FlexiSoft project, simulate it and do the report and just show you how simple it would be to put a robot palletizer application together. So that's the seven um, webinars in the series on FlexiSoft. Like I said, there's, uh, there's loads of things on YouTube and uh, always go to the web, you'll find lots of stuff. So that concludes this one. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And as I said, there are a number of people that are sick um, who can help you with this. My details are there. So Ian Keatley Smith, you've got my email address and my direct telephone number. And uh, I mainly cover the south of the country. Um, Martin Kidman covers the north of the country. And his details are there as well with email and telephone numbers. So please get in touch with us if you have any questions or if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one session with us as well. All the best and uh, we'll now open the floor up to some questions.